Is your airbrush clogging on you and being a general dick? Well, I got some tips for you. Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, next level painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days here in the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California. I got another painting tutorial for you. Today I'm going to show you a utilitary video, real mechanical, it's going to be super boring, I promise. Just turn it off. I've seen a lot of posts on the interwebs lately about how they don't like the airbrush. I just got an airbrush, but it's the worst. I knew I shouldn't have wasted my money, things like that. So I got some sick tech for you guys, in case you guys haven't heard I'm live on Twitch guys twice a week there's literally I mean we're live on Twitch with six hours of content a week if you've only seen these studio videos and you didn't even know we were live on Twitch check it out it's twitch.tv links in the description box below all the stuff guys that's not all I'm not the only one the long war network is popping wall-to-wall -wall convoys 10-4 check us out on Facebook the long war network if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna do a quick roll call. I'm gonna shout out a couple of clutch individuals who've supported me this week on Patreon. Yo, my man, Nick, Brant, of course, Julian, Samuel, my man, Dr. BJ, got my man, James, and Craig. You guys came and clutch this week. Patreon is how I keep the lights on. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Let's do this thing, guys. Whip out the old airbrush. Now yours might be different than mine. That's okay, because they're all basically the same principle. You're gonna unscrew this nozzle here, and we're gonna grab this brass tip. This is kind of the most important part of your airbrush for controlling flow. You gotta keep this in good shape. This is where the paint likes to dry, so this is usually where your phantom clog is. Yank that thing out, pull out a pipe cleaner, dislodge that dried ass paint. Now it doesn't matter how you soak your airbrush, what kind of ultra sonic cleaner you use, the paint, is still in here so unless you actually remove the paint it's gonna just dry up again and clog your shit out so what I like to do is I like to clean that paint out then I like to dry fit the needle in there see if there's anything holding the needle back be gentle now you're not seeing any paint here cuz you know you know what my airbrush is clean because I do this all the time but if this was real dirty and clogged you'd see colors right here in my thumb now, this is ancient Chinese technique right here. Hops number nine, gun solvent. This is great stuff for dislodging bullshit. Now, I used the back of the needle to drop a, a quick little drop in there that I pulled out of that container. Then we're gonna flip over and we're gonna very carefully coat the interior of this brass tip. We're gonna lubricate the needle, but also use this solvent to break up the paint. You know, very few things can break up paint like Hops number nine, but also simultaneously lubricate. Now I've had situations where I thought this was clean and you will see all manner of color of paint being thrown out of there. Now, if you're worried about how much oil we just put in there, you can always just take a little bit of a paper towel, coil it up, soak up that extra oil, but it doesn't really ever affect anything as far as I can tell. Now here is the ancient Chinese technique of all techniques, airbrush flow improver. So if you're having clogs, you're having trouble thinning your paint down, this is the solution for me at least. I'm going to pour a nice bed of it in there. I'm going to pour in more than you think you need even. Now I'm going to take Deep Blue from Army Painter. and This is a very pigment heavy paint. This is not promoted as an airbrush paint system. We're going to pour that thick ass pigment in there. Very thick. And then we're going to pour a little water on top. We're going to stir it all in and we're going to make this work. So I'm just doing this in real time. We're not going to do any movie magic at this point. This is going to be breaking the fourth wall trying to keep that live flare right here in this studio tutorial. So we're not gonna do that many cuts. Now look, there's a little bit of water on top. Now we're gonna do an old school technique, the gangster gumbo backflow technique. We're covering the tip, not letting the air escape and we're bubbling it together, mixing all that together. Now this is another technique. We're gonna loosen the back here, slide the needle out and we're gonna prime the pump. We're gonna blast some of that through by backing the needle out. We're gonna clean the tip so there's nothing dripping there. We're gonna get everything tight again and we're gonna actually just show you here in real time with no cuts. Breaking the fourth wall, dropping the camera crane down, getting back in focus. I'm gonna show you how easy this actually is, how to get your paints nice and thin so you don't experience clogs. But you know what, everyone's gonna have clogs sometimes, that's why I showed you how to clean that tip. So here we go, it's that simple, real time. That paint is coming right out and sticking to this black. And you saw how much we thinned it 
This is an Army Painter Heavy Pigment Paint and it's airbrushing perfectly fine. Even though the paint's a little thin, we're leaning heavy on air trigger work. We're only letting a little bit of paint escape. And so that air is actually throwing it down and helping seal it up real quick. This technique does cause clogs though, but that's why we don't use thinner or alcohol ever because those just dry the paint even faster. We use Flow Improver, which is also a bit of a drying retardant. So we're gonna do some sick coating here. We're gonna get everything we can. We're gonna throw this deep blue, which is one of my favorite Army Painter colors. I used it on the Ultramarines project we recently did, and I'll probably bring it back again for Rabute Gilliman, Lord of Sultramar. Once you're happy with where you're at, just dump out the excess into an ancient Chinese water bottle lid in case you need to come back to it for some brush detail and leave a little bit in the pot. We're gonna, we're gonna pour a little bit of the excess out. I just want a little bit of that deep blue in there. Then we're gonna switch gears. We're gonna grab a different color behind the fourth wall, Hydra Turquoise. We're gonna let this color mingle with the deep blue. Very easy. We're opening the lid with our teeth now, pulling the camera crane back, making sure we establish focus as we try to limit how many cuts we do in this video to show you as much real-time action as possible. And you can even see the miniature top left of the screen is still wet because that's how fast we're moving. A little bit of flow improver, a little bit of this awesome turquoise color. We're gonna have to reach now for our stirring stick, aka busted ass paintbrush, and we're gonna swirl this together, creating a new highlight which pulls from the original base color. We're gonna do the gangster gumbo, and we're gonna do our best to get this flowing. And here we go, I think we're gonna experience a little bit of our first hiccup here. We're priming the pump. We're testing it now after we clean the tip here. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're not getting good flow. So, a little bit more water on top. Thin it down a little bit more. Gangster gumbo, backflow technique. We're right, feeling a little better, but we're gonna, we're gonna prime that pump again. Just let that paint go, let it ride. Let's do one more gangster gumbo. Yet again, another flush, and you can see a little chunky just flew out right there. We're feeling good about this mix. That's simple, guys, real time. Now let's get the camera cane back engaged. Let's get the highlighting to commence. Here we go, guys, this fast. We're gonna rapid fire this. We're just gonna angle our paintbrush in such a way that we can get the tips and the tops, sort of a Xenthio highlight, but you don't always have to hold the model in the Xenthio position. I'm just kind of like, bullet curving the paint around the directions I want. We're just focusing on the tops of things here, creating that nice highlight. We're gonna take it one step further, don't worry, but this is also to show you three stages of a highlight and how much we can do with an airbrush, how much we can do and experiencing no issues. I know a lot of people hit me up online and they say, yo, I fucking hate airbrushing. It shit always clogs on me. So that motivated me to make a video like this. Okay, here's a cut, guys. We're gonna cut real quick. We just dumped it out like we did in the previous step. Now we're gonna pour some white in there, let it mingle with the turquoise, pull out the old stirring stick, whip it together. Now white is notoriously difficult to spray without speckling. So I'm gonna show you real quick, simple steps. Boom, looking good. Prime the pump, blast it. Okay, we've got a lot in there. It's primed, it's ready to go. Let's pour some more flow improver in there. Let's percolate it again with the gangster gumbo technique. We went kind of hot there. Movie magic not happening. Okay, that's real gangster. That's real speckle. So we're reaching. We're going to clean that tip because we just dirtied the tip up with all that pump priming. Okay, it's looking a little better here. I'm feeling it. Yep, quick test on my hand. Looking good. Let's get the camera crane he engaged. Make sure we're unfocused. No cuts here. Real time. He's still soaking wet. See, we've moved so fast he hasn't even had time to dry at all. Now we're gonna sling this white into the very tips of things, being able to control our flow flawlessly. There we go on the top of the head, top of the arms. Let's get that, let's get that claw even. Let's get everything, tops of things here. This is kind of a <laughs> inadvertent gangster wet blend with the airbrush technique. As you can see how shiny everything is. Let's get that, let's get that booty. Let's get, let's get the calves, let's get all that right there. It's a little aggressive, it's not, it's not, when you go this fast and it's like just wet on wet on wet, it, it does funny things, but it's all good because we are gonna come in with an aggressive wash on this model. 
so I'm not too worried about it. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm trying to showcase how easy it is to get paints ready for the airbrush, how to minimize your clogging, how to keep the paint flowing. Real easy, guys. Okay, we're in the home stretch now. We're going to enter into, I think, our last, possibly one of our last cuts of the video now that I've showed you all this real time behind the fourth wall action. Here we go. All this white in here, it's dead to us. We're gonna pour some water in the pot, percolate it with the gangster gumbo, and we're gonna dump it out. We're gonna get rid of it. Now, every one of you has your own system for removing paint in your beads lab. I have the hobo sink, the base of my operation. Boom, dumped it in the hobo sink. A little bit more water, percolate it, dump it, feeling it. There it is, it's pretty much swabbed out now. Here's another ancient Chinese technique. We have a shot glass with some simple green in it. We're gonna roll it around, make sure it gets inside the pot there, and then we're gonna slowly introduce some air and let it recycle the clean, soapy water back through itself over and over again. Make sure it's doing its best. Dump it out. Now, paint's gonna struggle to stick to the inside of this airbrush. Now, I'm cutting off the compressor, unscrewing, and we're just gonna leave it here. I just leave the paintbrush in the shot glass. That simple, guys. Hey, do me a favor if you can, subscribe to this channel. It would mean a lot to me. All you gotta do is click on the subscribe button, but go one step further, hit the bell symbol, guys. Send me notifications. It would be a big help. Anyway, play on, players. If you like these tutorials, check out Next Level Painting on Patreon. Become a patron of the arts today. We offer early and exclusive access to our videos and a rewards program for different pledge levels. Patreon is PayPal and credit card secure, so you don't have to worry about that. We use 100% of the money to improve our process.